Good morning, everyone. Today, we are sharing about grief. And both this week and next week, when we talk about healing, we're really talking about loss. And this sad book is one of my go-tos for this topic. And as a word of preparation, it is a really deep and vulnerable book. And it talks about the loss of the author's child. And this is Michael Rosen's sad book. It's written by Michael Rosen. And you might recognize the illustrations because the illustrator, Quentin Blake, also partnered with Roald Dahl for many of his works. So the artwork might seem very familiar. So this is Michael Rosen's sad book. This is me being sad. Maybe you think I'm happy in this picture. Really, I'm sad, but pretending I'm happy. And I'm doing that because I think people won't like me if I look sad. Sometimes sad is very big. It's everywhere, all over me. Then I look like this, and there's nothing I can do about it. What makes me most sad is when I think about my son, Eddie. He died. I loved him very, very much, but he died anyway. Sometimes it makes me really angry. I say to myself, how dare he go and die like that? How dare he make me sad? Eddie doesn't say anything because he's not here anymore. Sometimes I want to talk about all of this to someone, like my mom. But she's not in here anymore either, so I can't. I find someone else, and I tell them all about it. Sometimes I don't want to talk about it. Not to anyone. No one. No one at all. I just want to think about it on my own, because it's mine and no one else's. Sometimes, because I'm sad, I do crazy things like shouting in the shower, banging a spoon on the table, or making my cheeks go whoop, whoop, whoop. Sometimes, because I'm sad, I do bad things. I can't tell you what they are. They're too bad, and it's not fair to the cat. Sometimes I'm sad, and I don't know why. It's just a cloud that comes along and covers me up. It's not because Eddie's gone. It's not because my mom's gone. It's just because. Maybe it's because things now aren't like they used to be a few years ago, like my family. It's not the same as it was a few years ago. So what happens is there's a sad place inside of me because things aren't the same. I've been trying to figure out ways of being sad that don't hurt so much. Here are some of them. I tell myself that everyone has sad stuff. I'm not the only one. Maybe you have some too. Every day, I try to do one thing that I can be proud of. Then when I go to bed, I think very, very, very hard about that one thing. I tell myself that being sad isn't the same as being horrible. I'm sad, not bad. Every day, I try to do one thing that means I have a good time. It can be anything so long as it doesn't make anyone else unhappy. And sometimes I write about sad. Where is sad? Sad is anywhere. It comes along and finds you. When is sad? Sad is any time. It comes along and finds you. Who is sad? Sad is anyone. It comes along and finds you. I write. Sad is a place that is deep and dark, like the space under the bed. Sad is a place that is high and light, like the sky above my head. When it's deep and dark, I don't dare go there. When it's high and light, I want to be thin air. This last bit means that I don't want to be here. I just want to disappear. But sometimes, I find myself looking at things, faces in a window, and then I remember things, my mom in the rain, Eddie walking along the street, laughing and laughing and laughing, doing his old man act in the school play, the two of us playing catch on and off the sofa, and birthdays. I love birthdays, not just mine, other people's as well. Happy birthday to you and all that. And candles. There must be candles. <laughs>